Hello, everybody. We are live now with the live Q&A for the uh, Ask Melco experts, the applications team. Uh, we're just going to kind of chit chat here for a few minutes, let everybody join in. We'll probably get started around, um, I don't know, in three, uh, two to five minutes, somewhere like that. Hi, Susan from Pennsylvania. And our Sue is there too. Hi, Sue. Hannah, hello. Diane, hello. Carlos, hello. Scott, are all those so outs in the background stuff that you've uh, done recently or are those old old ones? No, that's I worked out of uh, this office here in my house for 15 years, solid, just digitizing. So oh, yeah. <clears throat> they're all remnants of the past. Actually, most of them are in rayon, if you can believe it. <laughs> there should be some sort of muse embroidery museum that I think you're looking at it. Yeah. <laughs> Scott donates all his. Chica! You get your own wing. A, what's wild is there's like, you know, 100 so outs on the, the 8x4 uh, soundboard, and there's 100 deep for, you know, each one. It's like terrible. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. I did 11,000 plus while I was here. Hello from upstate New York, wow. Melissa. Ohio. I'm from Ohio. Well, I went to high school in Ohio, east side of Cleveland, Menor, Ohio. Huh. Diana, hi again from Montana. My brother's Someone moving to it. Anaconda. Is this being recorded? Yes, it's being recorded. Yes, this is being recorded. It'll be up on Facebook and YouTube. Norma from Mississippi. Howdy. Did you guys ever, when you were a kid, when you would spell Mississippi, did you learn it like M I crooked letter, crooked letter I? No. Yeah. Was I the only one? I did. I never heard okay, that. cool. That's funny. No, what's wild is uh, back in the, the eight, late 80s, early 90s, I had a, a huge uh, knit shirt manufacturer customer out of Mississippi. So all the logos had Mississippi. Well, that's the coolest because there's so many duplicate I's and S's <laughs> when you're digitizing letters, you're just like, Paste and hammer through. Yeah, that was <laughs> nice. Yeah, when we did all the collegiate stuff, the, the that was always one of my favorites. And then state, you had the two T's that you could just, and the S came from the other one. And yeah, right. yeah, totally. Yeah, recycle that, make it easier. Um, Keith Meisner from the first state. I'm assuming I should know this. First state's oh. Virginia or Pennsylvania? First state. Who's got it? Trivia. Would it be Massachusetts? Massachusetts, that's very good. Yes, probably. Um, Keith, um, don't be, don't, don't, don't judge us, Keith. I'm going with. Um, I'm thinking Delaware. Delaware. First state in the U.S. Delaware. Ho oh, ho! We got a winner. Way to go, Rachel. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I'm a little bit of a nerd. So we yes, do have probably. someone who asked a question on there about how. Do we have a YouTube on how to do an applique? So um, I know we have a bunch of videos. I don't know if we're going to just post links or how we, we're doing handling that. Yeah. Um, if if John doesn't ask the question and it's more of a question like that, Sam or anybody on the panel, feel free to post some links uh, uh, for the question. Yeah. So Carlos, good question. Do you have a YouTube on how to do applique? Um, the um, the answer is yes. And we will, um, if somebody wants to find that link, we can post it in the comments here. I'll get it here in a second. But yay, yeah, Kansas. Kansas. Sorry. Yeah, and Kansas I know I know, I've done a live video on how to applique as well in the group, in my Good. group. Good. So it's definitely out there. It's definitely out there. Yeah. All right. So we're uh, four minutes in. This is a good time to get started. Seems like people are popping in. I want to encourage everybody in the comments to leave your questions. That's how we'll, that's how we'll get them. I will then... Um, parse them out to um, our experts here in the panel. My name is John LaDrew. Welcome, everybody. I am uh, the Digital Imaging Director at Melco and also part of this fantastic elite uh, applications team. Uh, Mike D is our fearless leader uh, of the applications team. Scott Stengel, you have all heard and seen before, I'm sure, in videos. He is our design shop master, embroidery master, uh, digitizing master. Um, well, they're all that, but Scott is sort of like that's um, Samantha Maribel, welcome. Um, she's going to be answering questions regarding running a business type 
uh, questions, multi-head type setup. Um, she's um, also does our design shop stuff, which I'm sure you've seen a lot of her videos. Nate Moore needs no introduction. However, we will introduce him. The dude knows everything about embroidery. He's done an amazing job with design shop and UI type stuff, incredible um, applique stuff. Um, um, Nate's going to be handing fonts and fabric and, and uh, graphics for us. Uh, John Dukovics, a longtime Melco guy, um, super knowledgeable on everything relating to digital or to, uh, to embroidery. He's going to be talking about digitizing and patches. Uh, Rachel Allenbaum is one of our just Melco pros. We're just lo we love to have her for the love of Melco. Rachel is here. Stoked. Thank you for being here, Rachel. Um, she's going to talk to you about a lot about uh, Bravo type stuff if you have Bravo questions. And our tech master, Mark Davis, he's here. We hope we can hear him. Um, uh, he was having some mic issues, but just thrilled that Mark's here. Obviously, the dude knows everything about you want to know about the internal components of an embroidery machine. That's your guy. And so if we if he can come around and chat. Uh, we'll get to it. So without further ado, we're going to start going right into the questions. Um, and I'm going to search through them here. You guys start throwing them in on the comments and I will start um, uh, start laying them out for you. So I have from Susie Saber, I've designed shop nine pro or pro nine. It will close down in the middle of designing. Can you help design shop? Scott, what do you think? Well, that's a rough question. If it's a computer, it sounds like it might be a computer issue, but what are you working on? Is it when you bring in graphics or just digitizing any shape? I mean, this could be a, a, a lot. So, Scott, I think one one thing that I would look for on the computer side would might be the graphics card, making sure that you've got the latest drivers for your graphics card. What do you yeah. think? So... Um, what you do is go to device manager to find out what you do have. I mean, I'd be happy to show all that, but uh, the, the drivers are always free. There's basically three companies, Intel, uh, AMD, and NVIDIA that make video cards. And so once you find out which one is in your system, then you can uh, go to the website and uh, check for updates and, and download free drivers that makes a huge difference a lot of the really challenged computers that don't have a separate video card uh, they can suffer sometimes from old video drivers intel has them usually you have uh, an icon for intel in your tray down by your clock and you can just click on that and check for updates to get them there cool Don, yeah, um, there are updates or there is an updated version of Design Shop. Uh, you, if you want to reach out to your salesperson, um, that might be a, a, a solution for you to upgrade computer and, and maybe update uh, Design Shop. Um, what's, if, yeah, what's, try check for updates too, right inside Design Shop, because it could be we have another version, a later version for you that you don't have. Always up there, right? All right. So next question from Don Potts. Uh, what is better than Design Shop Pro 11 to turn EPS files into Stitch? Scott. What is better? Um, so a lot of it, if you're having trouble, tends to be the, the version that you're saving the EPS file in. So if in Illustrator you um, save down to version 8 and try bringing that in, usually that has great success. The reason is... Adobe has a whole staff of people that are just designing crazy stuff with EPSs all the time. And to keep up with that, no manufacturer could. You'd need a staff the size of Adobe. So everybody kind of just settles with version uh, 8 EPS. And that'll do a terrific job. Nate, any comments on that? It the Illustrator EPSs, they can have raster information in there and all kinds of effects and things that just really don't translate to embroidery and can kind of confuse that a little bit. Um, so saving that back to eight, which is a Illustrator kind of only kind of option, helps simplify and, and, and bring that back down to something that is a little more manageable for embroidery, I find. Um, to answer the question just straight up, I don't think there is anything better than 11 for changing vector into stitches. I think it works really, really well, given the shapes are appropriate for that and there's not, you know, some 
crazy raster effect underneath or or something like that. Um, and I'm the step, the step through works good too compared to just one click auto convert because it gives you more control. So, that's... and if if you only want to deal with a little bit of it at a time, I find selecting those and then using your editing tools to do it. And there's there's videos on that as well. Um, it makes it a little bit more manageable. So if if you're having trouble with the whole, try it in bits, and and that tends to sometimes give you better results. Thanks, guys. Um, next question, Clint um, asks, what are some of the best practices for hooping hats? Josh is not here, so who's going to answer that one for him? Yeah, I'll take that one on. Um, John LeDrew actually just did a really, really good video. John is um, John LeDrew is going through and learning embroidery. Uh, he's great digital, uh, wants to know more about embroidery. So check out John LeDrew's uh, three tips on on getting hats to sew better. Um, and, and that I think will really give you a lot. Um, there's a lot about the digitizing side too, that on melco-service.com, um, if you go into the FAQ and type in caps, there's just a, a wealth of uh, information in there that I don't think we could cover um, in, in this time, but I would check that stuff out. You always have questions on this stuff after today you can always email applications at melco.com and this whole group uh, works through that email and, and we'll be able to get back to you with more details. But I would check out John LaDrew's video. I, yeah, my video is real to the point. I, I learned a lot from it. So nice. All right. Very good. Thanks. Um, so, Diana, for Nate, watched you tie a, uh, tie a knot when changing thread. But could you explain as I cannot get it through the needle and have... Um, and, and so have to always rethread. What's the knot trick? <laughs> um, if you watched me do it, I tend to tie a slip knot, which is not what we recommend, right? It's just what I've done for years and years and years, but the square knot actually does work. Um, you just have to tie it. If you tie, a, what's the other one that's not a square knot? A granny Overhand? knot or a whatever. Granny knot or figure eight. It doesn't tend to work as well. It doesn't slide through as well. The other thing that I tend to do is I will use my finger on the backside of the needle to you work as a pulley and and kind of direct that thread through, and that tends to help um, quite a bit. Yeah, rethreading every needle is ugh, not worth it. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, next question from Pam. Want to get started with EMB split fronts? How do I get started and get going on training? Um, this is an applique an applique question. Who wants to take that? Let's have uh, John Dakovics, Mr. Dakovics, take that. There you go, John. Uh, 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 so it's a split front for a baseball jersey i assume yeah let's go with that yeah okay so what you want to try to do you're going to probably have to do your design in two halves and you just have a, a marking uh look for a center a point maybe like the uh buttonhole as a guide on one side and then you digitize uh from the center of the shirt to the outside and then pick up the other piece. You might have to overlap maybe a quarter of an inch on the inside button half and digitize outward to that direction. But direction, the way you digitize has a lot to do with getting a good uh, matchup of uh, both halves of the uh, jersey when it comes together. Is there any videos on that, John? Yes. What do we have? Here. Yeah, we do. Yeah. So check the, YouTube, uh, check the YouTube channel, Pam. There's uh, definitely some intel on that. Um, and again, reach out to us in the email if you have any questions or reply on a YouTube and we respond to those uh, questions on YouTube. Um, from Diane, I have, I have issues with my Melco OS. It will shut down when I open my design. That is not an OFM. Scott. Uh, check for updates, Mike. Uh, yeah. what? I, it, not knowing what version, um, I would say, once again, kind of back to those same basics, check out your uh, graphics card, make sure that you've got the latest drivers on that um, and, and make sure that you've got the latest version. So if you're in version 10, uh, like Scott said earlier, do tools, check for update, make sure you've got the latest version. Um, that's about all we can cover uh, with this little information as we've got. Diana. Oh, I have a big red. What is the newest computer I can use? That's a good question. Mike, why don't you answer that too? Yeah, so uh, my OS version 10, 10.01.1, um, 
0.001, I think it is. Um, that's going to be the latest version that uh, the big red can run on. Um, that version of software is compatible as much as we know with Windows 10 and Windows 11. I, I was running it with Windows 10 downstairs. I have not run it on this Windows 11 machine yet. Good to know. Uh, Marcy May, I have three machines with two EMTC 16Xs. I've noticed that when I start them up, they're lagging a bit and taking longer mm -hmm. to and taking longer to go on what could this be the machines have a dedicated plug mark can you uh can you elaborate on that if we can hear you if not i can i, th I think he's frozen yeah go ahead samantha so i've but i have 13 machines out here and what i've noticed is the x all the machines depending on what machine you have have a different beat, boot up sequence and take different different times. So if you're running an XTS, it loads the files differently and both boots up in one time, particularly if you do a force download or something like that. Whereas the X's have a different sequence. They do take a little bit longer to boot up when compared to the um, older machines. It's just their boot up sequence. So um, if that's what you're looking at is where when you turn them on, how long it's taking that the X's take longer than if you're running an XT or an XTS, yeah, that's just their sequence. It's it's a different um, different software or different computer inside of it, if you so will. So not much to do about it. It's pretty normal. Yeah, and okay. I mean, if what you're if if you the question's asking something else, let us know and we can address it some more. But I mean, it's all the different machines have different boot up sequences and times to load, Good. and that Thanks, would just Samantha. be normal behavior. Good. Thank you. Um, Keith, uh, DS10 standard, is there a way to put automatic cut and tie between each letter on the pre-digitized fonts in DS? Scott? Is there a way to, can you give me one more time on that? Yeah, no problem. Scott, maybe Nate listen in on this one too. Um, uh, Keith asked, in Design Shop 10 standard, is there a way to put automatic cut and tie between each letter on the pre-digitized fonts in DS. So pre-digitized means the alphabet fonts. Yeah. Yeah. Nate what too. you want to do is go into your tie stitch tab. And if you shorten the uh, trim, if greater than, really short, it'll trim every one. In uh, version 11 design shop, we came out with a new feature, which is you just click a, on trim between letters. And then it doesn't matter what anything is said at it trims between every single letter. Pretty cool feature. Yeah. yeah so and, nice and I would do, I would change that. I would potentially change that setting just for the lettering elements. I don't typically like to have different settings through the, like, especially trim and tie settings um, through my design. But that, that is my one exception to that would be, I would maybe shorten that for, for my lettering only. Good. Hope that helps Keith. Um, Norma. I have an Amaya XTS and I'm running OS 10. Can I update without having problems? Also, I'm having major problems with false thread breaks. I tried everything that I could find. Who wants to answer that one? I'll take on. Oh, go ahead, Sam. Yep. So um, running OS 10. So AOS, it, I mean, the XTS will run on the newer software. So if you go up, you know, get an X, um, an EMT 16 X, which has the newer software, your XTS will run just fine on it. Um, I'm running four out there on, with my X's, so it's fine. The false thread breaks, uh, you know, I would start off with the basics, making sure your active feed isn't too high, that your bobbin isn't super loose, you know, start with the basics there. And then from that, you kind of back out and try different things, right? So if you've already, assuming you've tried all the basics and your settings are appropriate for what you're doing, um, your machine set up right, and you're still getting false thread breaks, I would troubleshoot it a little more by trying standard versus auto and seeing if that does it, because, you know, you may end up, particularly if you've over oiled on the 2 million um, stitch count maintenance, you may need to look at your thread break sensor. Awesome, Samantha. Thank yeah. you. Very good. good. Uh, Belinda, um, I don't use my Amaya very often at all. I was, it was a gift. When I start up the machine after being completely down for a few weeks, it does not want to start up. So there it sits. What am I doing wrong? Yes. Yeah, so Melinda, I'll take that one on real quick. Melinda, I would say 
I would probably call Melco service um, and, and have them walk through that with you directly. Uh, to me, it might be something with the ethernet connection. Um, it really, the vagueness of that question, there's a lot of different ways we can go. The machine itself, um, the, the memory that it has, it may be that the, uh, the memory is lost. <clears throat> and if it's an older machine, you may need to do a forced download. Um, uh, so there's many different things there. I would call tech support on it. E-stop. Oh, E-stop, yeah. yeah. E-stop, there you go. If it's yeah. beeping at you. <laughs> yeah, that gets us all on one way or another on yep. all sorts of different pieces of equipment. Um, Ruth Ann, I manually digitized a cross-stitch design in Design Shop 10. When I tried to open it DS11, it kicks me out of DS back to my desktop. Wow. For that, first thing I would do is in Design Shop 10, do a check for updates. We have a version 46 for you now, which most people uh, tend to run 42. 46 Design Shop, um, it gives you the ability to read wireframe from version 11 designs in v10 but also we made changes to the save part so check for updates and get version 46 uh, to start awesome uh ja what does the force download do in melco os <laughs> you see a lot of head shaking rachel what do you think of that one the force download in melco os yes. um I don't know if I can explain that in Melco technical terms. <laughs> I mean, I know when you need to try it, but uh, might need help with like the the technical. Who would you ask? Reasons and why? Um, who, who would you divert this question to? Um, I'm going with probably Mike or Nate. Maybe. <laughs> Go ahead, Nate. <laughs> I was going to ask Sam. Um, <laughs> Talk to it. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, it, 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 it kind of depends on the machine, but it's going to, depending on the machine, do absolutely nothing. Or uh, give it kind of a new set of files in case there, there yeah, in case something got a little bit wonky. Um, there was, there was a machine at a time um, that if you built up a good enough static charge as you were going across your carpet and zapped it, it might do a little funky things with thread break or whatever. And you could do force download, give it its new brain again, and it would be a lot better off. I look at force download as just a reset of reset of the computer on the machine. Yeah. So that's some of I the older boards, it. like the XTS machines, the XTs, the red and whites, right. um, they actually have a battery on the board and that battery can only retain the life or the memory of the board for a certain amount of time. Um, so either that uh, memory can get corrupt, that's a good reason to do the force download, or that battery, if this machine sat long enough, needs its uh, um, uh, you know software uploaded. It's not really software, it's firmware, but it, for us, it's software. Um, and then with the new machines, if you've got an EMT 16 plus or an X, or a Bravo X or a E16, all those machines, the force download does absolutely nothing. Good to know. Uh, Rachel, I am looking at a Bravo uh, or an EMT 16X. What is the big difference? The, the big difference between the X and the E16? I can't actually see the comments, sorry. Oh, sorry, no problem. Between the Bravo, yeah, Bravo X and the EMT 16X. So, What's the big difference? What do oh, you see? Oh, the E, the 16X. Um, the Bravo has a slightly um, smaller sew field. Um, it can't go quite as fast. Um, it still has the same uh, trimmer system, which is really nice. Um, and it can still do hats. It can only do the fronts of hats. But obviously, you know, you do fronts of hats more than you do sides and backs. So that's definitely a plus. Very good. Good to know. The big Thank thing, you. too, yeah. if I can chime in, is the 16X can be hooked up to multiple machines, yes. whereas the Bravo is only a standalone by itself. Correct. Very good. Thanks, John. Thank you. Okay. <laughs>
Diana, besides the Big Red, I also have the EMT 16 Plus. The Big Red does not have felt thread guide as the EMT 16. Can it be attached to it as it seems to be a benefit? Samantha. Yes. So one of the first things I did when the EMT X came out with the felt ones is I ordered 13 of them and put them on all my machines <laughs> uh, is what I did. Yes, you can use them on all the machines. Um, they will just so, be silver yeah. and not match the white. Correct. They do not match at all. But, but if that's not important to you, it's right, good. Soon? I love it. So yeah. it's, uh, I love it. They, it's, it seems to keep everything nice and contained and not flopping around where, especially when I'm going to thread needles next to it, I don't have to worry about things, you know, it's just more contained. I like it. Like I said, I put it on every machine out there. As soon awesome. as it came out, I was like, Ooh, nice. I want that. Upgrades, upgrades. Right. Yeah. I love that. Uh, Clarita from uh, Clarita says, hello. Hi Clarita. Okay. Next question. Um, why and when would I use vertical stitch order? Nate. Um, that actually ties into, I think, another one comment that I saw scroll past. Uh, uh, that is only available for lettering, um, but you're going to use it when you want to push away from the bottom of your design and you, you want to sew up, which most of the time is for caps. Another yeah. thing is if you want to sew above pockets too, that can oh, push you away instead of would... sewing towards the edge of the pocket as well. Yep. Wow, or great scene. Point, awesome. Um, how do I make the icons larger in Design Shop version 10 and OS advanced view? Scott, how do we do that? In V10? Uh, yeah, V10. Um, oh, is there an 11 option? But uh, how do you but, make the yeah. icons larger? Yeah. So with 11, we came out with three sizes of icons and enlarged the text. Everything is crisp, works great under 4K monitors, all that kind of stuff. With V10, we don't have control over the icons, kind of a size Windows does. So um, chances are in your Windows installation that Windows has scaling turned on, like uh, here in this system, <clears throat> the normal Windows scaling is 150%. So I can make the icons 50% larger if I tell, you know, Windows to do it. So uh, the way it's done is on your desktop, you will right click on the DS10 icon. And then you will go to properties. And I'm trying to remember this from, uh, from memory, it's been a, a little bit. Um, and maybe I should just go through it real quick. If I yeah, I think that um, also in melco-service.com under the FAQ, you can actually type in this uh, question um, and we've got some stuff on there. But one thing to keep in mind, Design Shop V10, uh, 4K monitors weren't out when we came out with Design Shop V10. Um, so really check out V11. It's made for 4K monitors. Um, Nate went through and actually did a really good job of changing up the icons so that when they go bigger, they don't pixelate. It's really cool. Check out V11. Thanks, guys. Yeah. So can I finish this one? Or? Yes, yes. Okay. So uh, right click on the Design Shop 10 uh, icon on your desktop. Go to Properties. From there, there's a Compatibility tab at the top of the screen. Then you go to... Uh, Button that's called change high DPI settings. And from there, you have a high DPI scale override. You change it from um, system to system and from application to system. And then hit OK, restart design shop 10, and you'll have whatever your scale factor uh, increase is set to in Windows. Cool. Uh, nice, Scott. Good. Thank you. All right, next question is from Frank. This is a relatively techy one, and I have no clue, clue what the heck he's talking about. So I'm going to leave this open to the panel, whoever feels like they got the best answer on this question. <laughs> Frank, I get re I regularly get bobbin. I get regularly. Okay, hold on. Let me try this again. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you said Etsy yesterday. <laughs> uh, all right, Frank, here we go. I'm going to nail this, buddy. All right. 
I regularly get Bob and showing on top doing lettering on hat backs. I don't know. Okay. Hoop tech cap backs with presser foot two to four up 16 X bobbin tested between 150 and 220 bobbin case cleaned every bobbin bobbin tension tested each bobbin AF 10 auto and increase until false thread breaks. Anybody know what he's talking about there? Yeah, Sam, you want to take a shot at that and I'll follow up. Nice. I am so confused. <laughs> Okay, so bobbin showing on top. It, so your bot, you already cut your bobbin tension. Your presser foot's there, and your active feed. I mean, generally, when I see bobbin on top, I start with the bobbin tension and the active feed setting. That's where I start. So if I ever see the bobbin wrapping around, the first thing I'm going to go do is check my bobbin tension, and usually it's too loose. Um, so I'll tighten that up a little bit. And then from there, if I'm still seeing it, then I go look at my act feed settings. Cause if they're too low, it's If it's pulling too tight, you're going to pull that bobbin around. Right. So making sure your active feeds not too low. So increasing it sounds like you're doing the right thing, honestly, from reading your comment. So I'm not a hundred percent sure, you know, the presser foot doesn't really play a huge role. I don't find or in I, bobbin showing up i would top? argue that it that it yeah. could and if you're on the back Does of the it? cap okay. it, you're, if you're on the back of the cap you're not dealing yep. at least i don't think you're dealing with the buckram that's gonna right. be part of it i would consider yeah, lowering right. it a click or two so right. you're getting less of that play and flag which can kind of right make more play in the thread sensor right. um so that might help too also, with everything else Sam and Nate have said, um, I would make sure that that back of hat is tight in in whatever uh, hoop or clamping system you're using, um, and then make sure that you're using a piece of tearaway below it. Um, but if it's if the material, whatever you're sewing, if the material is is uh, flagging or, or bouncing up and down, um, when the knot happens with the bobbin thread, it can have a tendency to pull up on the sides um, because it, it's not consistent tight material. So I think that's a great three answer uh, prod right there. So and and if, you, if you can't hoop the backing in it for whatever reason, at least float it. And how, how thin are the letters? Are they really, really thin? Or fattening them yeah. up would, would add a that's, little? That's a good one. Um, for Scott's sake on that, I would make sure that you're 10 to 12 points minimum on the width of those letters. So I think that's gives a lot of information. And the right hoop to do the job? I mean, if to keep it nice and tight? Well, you're already using the back of cap, yeah. right? Oh, okay. Yeah, that's where yeah. the shot. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. See? Yeah, yeah, just making sure that it's tight, right? Inside that back of cap is the important part. Awesome. Uh, Clarita, what is the difference in software in design shop versus in brilliance? Who uses in brilliance? Who knows what that is? So I'll, I'll try to answer it. I've played in in brilliance, great program. Um, but the one thing that I've noticed working with a couple accounts is, um, the way that their designs or the lettering works in it. Um, there's a lot of times that it'll go like, if you're doing a, a, a capital G it'll go up and then it'll trim at the top and then it'll come back down. So a lot of the, uh, the differences is, the professional version design shop um, is going to give you a lot more efficiencies in when you're sewing out your design. So you're not going to have, you know, 50 extra trims in something when uh, design shop will, will walk its way through the design um, and, and eliminate those extra trims. That's what I see. I've also noticed this, you end up with more control in design shop you have, you can affect a whole lot more things than you can. So you can control everything from how close your underlay is to the edges where you're not going to be able to do those sorts of things and some of the home use softwares. Yeah. So there's a, you get a lot more c control. Good. Design shops, alphabets, of course, are true hundred percent wireframe compared to, we all know what happens when we stitch process, take an expanded design and actually scale it. It has to figure out so much stuff backwards from just individual stitch file 
that you get distortion. So you're going to get more realistic, um, better selling results out of the design shop alphabets, in my opinion. Great. Hey, we're just over halfway through. Great job, everybody. Thanks for all the questions coming. Keep them coming. We have uh, another uh, 25 minutes or so, so. So plenty of time to get through all of your stuff. Hopefully this is helpful. All right, let's get back to it with Diane. Um, she wanted to readdress how sizing of icons is done again in v, V11 as opposed to V10. So is it the same process, Scott, or what's nope. different? We actually have it all set up. So you go to Tools, Options, Preferences, and yep. there's icon sizes, small, medium, large. I'm using two 27-inch 4K monitors here, and medium icons is plenty. I think you'd need like a 50-inch big screen TV that you were digitized on to use the large icons. So huge, mm -hmm. plenty, and much bigger text, bolder, easier to read. I yeah. really enjoyed that upgrade. I know. I've heard. Remember hearing you talking about it. That was one of the things you were really excited about, and I'm like, that seems so simple, but you know, it's the little things, man. You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, good. Uh, Ruth Ann, uh, I have an old Bravo. It's 11 years old. Can this machine do laser alignment? Good question. Laser alignment's awesome. She loves the machine. Who can answer that question? Sam, you want to take that one? Sure. Yes, you can do laser alignment. It's fantastic. Um, it's There's a bunch of videos out there, depending on how you want to do it. I know I've done some of centering over pockets, how you would set up the design. Um, Nate has a video where he does a different alignment um, code for like continuous embroidery on a ribbon. It was done Christmas time a few years ago. Um, so there's a, yeah. I want to argue that that's a maybe. Um, it's it's not the machine that's going to cause you to be able to do it or not. It is the software. Um, so that is a mm -hmm. trick that the Bravo learned. So if your software is older. The answer is no. If your software is newer or if you update your software, the answer is yeah. Yeah. So, um, so software, I believe uh, if you run on V9 or V10, you'll have that laser alignment option. Um, and, and remember that there's two different laser tricks. Um, laser alignment, you can do like above a pocket to, to kind of get the rotation, the position. Um, uh, and then the laser alignment, the Bravo does not have, that's the one where you can scale. put a line in and design shop, right? Really cool right. feature. Not a lot of people use it, um, but it's great um, to use with mixed media. Um, and I just want to take a chance and plug this real quick. Tomorrow, uh, same time, John LeDrew is going to be talking about the um, advantages of adding digital products like uh, die sub, um, direct to garment, direct to film. Um, I'm sure I'm missing some, uh, but he's going to be talking about the advantages of, of adding that to your embroidery business. Really catch that. I think I'm going to be tuning in because I always learn something from from John. So thanks. Nice plug, Mike. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Um, Marcy May. I was going to upgrade the cutters on my machine, but I've been watching the groups and people are saying it's not a good upgrade. Would the new cutter be good for the e, uh, for the 16X and for the 16 Plus? And what are the benefits? Mike, answer that one, will you? So I'll, I'll answer the, a little bit of that. The 16X already has the upgraded trimmer, um, but really the person I want to answer this because she runs her machines day in and day out. Sam, would you... Um, give us some thoughts of how you like them and, and please be blunt and, and honest with it. Um, so I did upgrade some, I haven't upgraded all my machines cause I'm not that rich, but, um, at the moment, but yeah, so it's, I don't, I love it. So it, you get nice small tails. Um, it trims beautifully. It's, I have nothing but nice things to say about mine out there. Cool. Um, it, it and Rachel, well. oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I don't know, Rachel. You got any thoughts on it? No, but I do. Um, uh, hold okay. on one sec, John. Yeah, I've done. I've ran both machines, and if your settings are right on the EMT 16, 16 plus, then you're going to be happy with the trim settings and everything. But upgrading to the X. It's they're night and day. They're both excellent machines and the trim, the trimmers on both of them are great, but there's just the way that they've re-engineered the X is just like 
it's it's awesome it's it's just totally different um and especially with running hats on it too um hats just stitch totally different they stitch good they stitch i mean i could run multiple hats in a day and the only time that it would have an issue would be because i ran out of bobbin and it stopped so i'd have to put more bobbin in it john yeah. I, i've been on a couple of uh, these upgrades and i could tell you one thing when they replace that arm and put in that uh, new blade that's fixed to the bottom of the needle plate. It makes a huge difference in the cutting because the old Bernina ones tended to get clogged up and they would slip, but these newer blades, they just do a phenomenal job cutting through, giving short tails. And if it's uh, plugged in, cause it has to be plugged in a different uh, area on your motherboard, um, then it does, it's almost faultless in, in how it performs. Right. Good to hear. Yeah, it's I still have a plus out there that I run. So, I mean, I use them all um, and it they all work beautifully. I think the only thing that took some of my friends who I've taught to use my equipment out there was that with the X, it took them retraining a little bit of putting the needle plate back on. But that's just a, how it's done. So it's not a hard thing. It's just this is what you have to do to put the needle plate on. So I think that's the only thing. But but the small tails, how consistent it is, it's great. It's beneficial. We recommend yeah. upgrading, upgrading that. I, and I do like, I, I want to say, I do like the way that it's flat on top, the newer oh, yes. um, arm where it's, it's a little more flat, whereas the other ones are rounder. So I feel like you just get more consistency with um, the presser foot coming down as well. And maybe that's what makes hats go so much better. Nice. Yeah. Well, I hope that was helpful, Marcy. I mean, you heard from the best regarding that, that upgrade. I know it's been helpful for a lot of people. So uh, Frank wanted to follow up on his question, and he also wanted to apologize to the group for his phone typing, which for a second, honestly, when I was reading it, I thought my brain was misfiring. But I get it now, Frank. It makes perfect sense. We all fat thumb our phones sometimes. But he wanted to elaborate. He was using heavy tearaway backing um, for the back of hats, and um, he's using a 7 mil military block 10 minimum. 10 min. I'm not sure if that means if you guys want to elaborate on that a little bit. Yeah, I would, uh, the things on the operational side, and then I'll hand it over to the design guys on the operational side, I would, I, uh, Frank, I would, if I was doing this, I'd bring my presser foot all the way down and one click up, um, unless you're running like super heavy wool hats, maybe two clicks up, but I think one click up would be better. Um, and then on the active feed, uh, if it's a regular twill material and you don't have that buckram, uh, like someone has mentioned on the active feed, I probably would start at a six um, and watch the active feed, um, the EKG monitor, as I call it. And if it is ranging at like a 12 or 14, then I might raise it up to an eight to a 10. Um, whatever that that number is on the active feed, I like to watch it if it's the first time I'm running it and then bring it down about two points below whatever it's, it's baselining. So design guys, what would you do different? Nothing. I mean, you called it maybe if it's, if it's just pulling in and pulling in, maybe take it to 12 or at a point of pull offset, but you may be doing that already. Good. Awesome. Thanks everybody. Pam, I didn't forget you. Uh, can I go from version 10 directly to professional? Love Sam's weekly design shop talk. Sam, shout out. Plan to purchase DS Professional soon. Hope I don't have to purchase the other versions in between. Please advise. Yeah. Um, so our, our sales folks are on and, and they can um, post about this, but you can jump from version 9 all the way up to 11 and we don't make you buy version 10. Um, so I would say the best thing to do is reach out to your salesperson uh, and and they can hook you up, but I'll, I'll I know I've seen a couple of debates on Facebook lately about is Design Shop version 11 worth it to go? They're alone in the alphabets that uh, um, that the the team has added to it, and some of the custom stitches like the foam arrow. Just that in itself, value wise, is worth more than what we're what Melco's charging for the upgrade. So to me, I, if I was uh, in your shoes, I would I would make the jump. Um, and yes, you can go direct to it. 
And I I saw another comment about some of the, the alphabets and whatnot. The the functionality that was added with open type support as well and finding different characters and using multiple versions of those characters in Design Shop Eleven, I I would do it. Killer. Uh, we're about 15 minutes left. We're 45 minutes in, so we have a few more questions. We should be able to get through all of them. Um, if you have any questions, throw them in now. I'm going to read. Uh, here's one from Clarice. Hello. Question about backing and fabrics, puckering or curling after the backing is cut off. We've tried double layer backing and water soluble tops and nothing helps. Rachel, have you experienced that before? I haven't experienced that right it is this right after it's being trimmed maybe i've not experienced that she says after the backing is cut off puckering or curling after the backing is cut off that i so, sure. yes yeah, sam go for it i think you're headed the right direction <laughs> yeah so so the biggest thing i notice when you got to think about why why is it puckering right so if you're when you hoop if you stretch it even a little bit you're overstretching the fabric when you release it after it sews nice and pretty it looks beautiful in the hoop you let it go and what's going to happen? It goes wee. So that's when you see all those puckers around your fabric. So sorry for the sound effects. But no, no, it totally yeah. makes sense. Sound effects <laughs> in my head, but, when it does yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. but that's but that's what you're seeing. So when you making sure you're not overstretching your fabrics, if you're using performance wear, it becomes even more interesting because that fabric tends to move around and stretch by itself a lot. So making sure it's stabilized, nice and just not stretched. Um, performance wear, you, there's some good uh, things in the FAQ section and videos have been done of using like a spray adhesive just to tack it down because it, if you do that before you hoop it, again, it prevents that motion. It stops you from being able to stretch it and yeah. is, you know, not stretching. Okay, the minute you stretch, it's good. You just, Wait. you just have to lay it on there as opposed to like- Flat and push down. Stretch it, right. yeah. Because the worst if thing you I look ever... at the grain and you see any kind of this when you are going to sew it, it's going to make it worse after it's been sewn. Right. Rachel, you're going to say something? Uh, another thing you could use is the uh, fusible. Um, right. Like I think it's called fusible mesh or fusible mm -hmm. interfacing. You can use that as well, and it will hold it. It, it doesn't yep. have any stretch whatsoever. So when you iron it onto the back, it keeps everything from stretching. Um, right. Nice. And that's that's very helpful too because if you do end up overstretching it, you could end up perforating around your design if you mm. overstretch it too, right. and then embroider it. Yep. Where do you get that backing or that uh, whatever you called it, Rachel? Um, I've yeah. always just gotten it from the local fabric stores. But I'm Aramis. guessing you can probably. One. Yeah, I know they make one, um, but I know a lot of the local stores carry them okay. too. Easy to find. That's good. Yeah, the yeah, yes, right. starter kit that you get with your machine has got some samples in there, some part stuff. So I would, um, if you're not sure where to get it, Madeira has always been a great partner for Melco. Thanks. Yeah, another heads up too, um, if you're hooping it correctly and you use the spray adhesive or the fusible and all that, you, you got to look at the design. I see a lot of them where they'll mm. try and recycle design. So uh, I used this in a recent um, uh, po a video that I did, you know, the you just have to be careful that the design, uh, the pro at the golf sh uh, shop, he said they already had it digitized, so he emailed it to us. Well, they run on performance wear, and the thing was digitized for a sweater. I mean, it has double zigzag, edge walk, tons of fill, all this stuff. The key to performance wear success is as few as stitches that are needed as possible. So um it could be your design is just way too heavy in the stitch count if it's an expanded you can use the scale key um to cut density fatten things up stuff like that so just be aware of that too good one scott all right so we're entering the lightning round the last of these questions we're going to try to um answer them uh read them quickly and answer them quickly because we have a handful more i want everyone to get in all right clarita what if you are digitizing it in brilliance by yourself that was a follow-up from her previous question I, I would get a, a, a demo copy, talk to your salesperson, get a 30 or 60 day trial and, and just compare it. Watch the videos. Um, I think you're going to love it. Diana, what is offered in the DS computer class? Was interested in taking it. Who offers the design shop computer class at Melco now? You can purchase four hours of individual uh, training through 
shop support. Melco. Shop Melco. Yeah. And that's like it Whatever said, personalized say. training. Yeah, no, it's, it's, what are you looking to get out of it? Killer worth it. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah, nice. it depends on what I should probably to take do. it too. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I would always check the videos in the manual first before I yeah. spend the money, but yeah, check it. Awesome. Uh, Rachel, is it possible to have new alphabet fonts added? Limited fonts on version 11 end up having to purchase lots of fonts. Nate. Um, that, that wounds me. I thought we had a lot of, <laughs> of variety, but, um, no, yeah, you can, you can always purchase, um, true type and open type and just make sure you have the rights to use them. And, and again, we did expand a lot of the capabilities so you can have contextual alternates and those kinds of things with those open type. Um, there are lots of places like fonts.google.com that you can get free and kind of open source ones too. So, so, you know, before you go spending the money, um, but yeah, you can, if you can add those. Go I ahead. assume they're asking about buying digitized fonts. So buying OFAs. That, that is so. a little bit harder to come by. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, to follow up with the laser Bravo laser question, Diana wants to know, Mike, are you saying that the laser alignment does not work with the Bravo? Yeah, so I uh, I uh, commented on this. No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying it depends on what version you have. You can always go help and about in the version. And if it's not version 9 or 10, I would give Melko a call and talk about updating. I'm sorry, upgrading um, your software so that you have that ability. Thanks, Mike. Uh, Josh Ship on the X. Uh, on the X upgrade, the bobbin arm compared to other Melco models, is the arm thinner and smaller to get in pockets of shirts better? No, it is not thinner. But it has the flat top. And that it helps. does have a flat top, but it basically is the same as, as all of the round lower arms. They're approximately the same width. I'm yeah. sorry, same diameter. Short Copy. of the red and white. Yes. Copy. How do you, uh, from uh, Marcy May, how do you adjust the tail length? I'm getting really long tails or sometimes not complete, that are sometimes not completely cutting. John Dakovics, how do you adjust that tail length? Oh, he's stuck on mute. Scott. Tool, tool settings. <laughs> Without having it running, uh, what is it, my tool. tools? Okay. It's go to tool settings and then click yeah, on. Yeah, and then you have your um, tail length. Under there, there's ta the tail length. Long and short. <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> no, say that again. I think we got a little confused there. And it and it got posted. It, there's an okay. article on Zendesk yep. about yep. it as well. Awesome. Right. Sweet. Very easy. Um, let's see, uh, Margaret. My Maya 16 needle machine has been sitting since 2011 when my house was destroyed. Oh. Sorry about that, Margaret. Um, I think I was I was still running Windows 98. What do I need to do to upgrade? What does she need to do to get this thing running, fellas? So, so Margaret, through? what I would do is I would find out. I'd go to melco dot or melco servicecom There's a little map icon over on the left hand side. I would find the closest third party tech. Um, and I would have them come out and go through the machine. Uh, and then they can talk to you about the computer stuff, or you can call in and talk to Melco about the computer and the software. But I would definitely get a tech out to look at that machine. And she can get that uh, how? Where she could go through support to get that? Yeah, Melco.com. Yep. Melco slash service.com. Yep. Very good. Okay, it looks like uh, we've run low on questions, which is good. We've gotten through everything. Is there any any anything that um, from our panel here that you guys have had answers or questions to that you want to elaborate on and kind of put some finishing touches out there? Rachel, anything? Thank you for being um, here. Thank you. I'm, yep. I'm glad to be here. I'm glad yep. you guys wanted me here too. Yep. Um, I can't think of any comments. Um, to any questions that were asked, um, but I'll go back through and read all the questions in a little while. And if I do, you know, I can comment on them then. You know, there was a question yesterday, Rachel, I think that you might be able to answer. And it was, it was a big topic uh, yesterday. Uh, pricing goods. How do you, how do you get, how do you determine your pricing and where do you find that sweet spot for, um, for selling stuff? 
Um, th that that just is a popular question. I wonder if you have any thoughts on that. It is. It really depends on if you're buying it wholesale or not, because mm -hmm. what you're buying it for is really going to determine what you're selling it for as well. Mm -hmm. um, but you, you definitely don't want to sell yourself short because it's definitely, you know, the product that we put out with these machines is definitely high quality. So one of the top things is don't sell yourself short. Mm -hmm. um, look at your, your pricing, write it all down. What did you pay for it? How much time did you spend on it? Did you have to pay a digitizer to do the file for you? Right. Um, it's, you know, there, there's kind of a list of things you have to ask yourself before you get to your final price. Um, so it's kind of an open-ended question right now without knowing, mm -hmm. you know, all those things. Do you charge um, by stitch or by time it takes to stitch out? Um, it's usually by stitch count mm -hmm. um, or if it's a basic monogram or a simple name, those have set prices mm -hmm. because, you know, it just it makes more sense to do it that way. Samantha wants to chime in. The, I do. I, the only <laughs> thing I would caution on the stitch count thing is it's dangerous to just go, all right, everyone charges X dollars per thousand stitches. Therefore, that's what I'm doing. That's, right. that's a dangerous position to put yourself in because what are your costs? Like we said, there's a lot more that goes into it. So while it might take a few minutes for you to figure it out, it is worth going through the exercise of running your costs, knowing what your stabilizer, your time, you know, your overhead and coming up and deciding, does that number make sense for my shop? Good enough. And, Thank you. Right. Sorry right. to cut you guys off. We have two more questions. We want to try to get them in the next four minutes. Um, how long will parts be available for the Amaya XT? Yeah, I would. Um, I don't know the answer. I don't think anybody here will know the answer to that. So I would call in uh, to Melco service and they should be able to give you that answer. Good. Uh, one, uh, two more actually. Uh, plus, 16 plus. Can one machine be run better with Active Feed 13 to 25 and while another runs best at 7 to 11? All factors equal. Thoughts? Yeah. So those, those factors, those numbers can be adjusted using something called the, uh, um, the, uh, what is it called? The TBS settings. Yes, yeah, sensitivity. Yep. And so you can adjust those sensitivities to get them to be more regular. You may have um, a thread break sensor that is uh, maybe a little bit um, ready to go out or just needs to be adjusted. So there are things that you can do to get those to be more consistent. I, I'll say I don't usually ch change mine. I usually just go these machines like these numbers, these machines like that number, and I move along. Yep. Good. Helps that. Hope that helps there. Okay. Last question um, from Kathleen Jones. Does Windows 11 play well with Design Shop? Uh, I Pro, think she Pro, Pro, Pro Plus. Plus. Yeah. Yeah. Scott. Yes. Yeah. So uh, if I've been using it since Windows 11 uh, Insider program, the beta <clears throat> for both Design Shop uh, 10 and 11, they work terrific. That's great. And Frank, I'll be right down. He's asking, can I come to his house for training? <laughs> uh, hopefully, what is it? It was your poison, uh, scotch or beer or what? <laughs> Gin? Brown <laughs> oil. Yeah, nice. Yeah, machine oil. <laughs> you just <throw> <laughs> Scott lives off machine oil. No, Crown Royal. Oh, Crown Royal. Oh, I like the machine oil better. I will have one last thing, John. Um, if you guys have additional questions after this is over, email us at applications at melco.com. Uh, Sam does a wonderful job every week doing a design shop talk. Um, if we have videos that we're missing, um, you know, so. the team is always looking at adding more videos. Um, and I just want to say I appreciate all of you on um, this call, the applications team. Um, every one of you are uh, have a special place in my heart. Um, and what you do for our customers is just phenomenal. So thank you. Thanks. There's Mike. another design shop talk tomorrow. Yay. Yep, plug that tomorrow's <laughs> design shop talk, you bet. Yeah, go to the YouTube channel. Uh, make sure you subscribe. Watch all of uh, the applications team's videos. I'm going to be doing more embroidery videos for those of you who can stand it. Um, I've got a ton of digital videos, too. Also, tune in tomorrow if you're interested at all in digital uh, decorations. Um, 
a roll and print cut, uh, Epson direct to garment, Epson dye sublimation, um, and then combining that even with some embroidery where you can do uh, mixed media where you're doing digital applications and then adding embroidery over top, laser alignment tools, super helpful for that. It all looks really good. Um, we like to do, that's what we do, right, Mike? We're applications team. We create cool it's, stuff with all the content, with all the equipment that we have. So we'll be talking more about that tomorrow. I think it's what makes us different in the yep. industry. Makes us different. Makes yep. us, you know, Unique. cool for a lack of a better word. <laughs> yeah. Well, at least for you, John. Hey, Chancho's the cool one. Look at him back there. Just John, there Chancho. he is. Yeah. Chancho, you want a bone? You want a bone? <laughs> <laughs> that's me you better give him a bone now. he's getting a bone all right okay. thank you everybody for tuning in it was a pleasure we're gonna end this broadcast thank you thank you bye-bye take care